Listening 103. Listen and read. What are the children doing in pictures 3 and 6? Now people in the future will know about the DSD club. Maybe they'll start a new DSD club in the future. The news reporter wants to interview you. The photographer wants to take some photos too. You've done a lot of interesting things this year. Can you tell us about them? Well, we cleaned up the local wildlife park. The river was a mess. It was filled with litter, but it's beautiful again now. We performed a play too. I see. Who was it written by? Us. We built the set too. It was great fun. We learnt how to do first aid. And we used first aid to help a famous footballer. Then we were invited to a football match. Wow. You've had a really busy year. I'm sure people will enjoy reading about the club. There's one more thing you should write about in your article. Do something different. Local children were given an award yesterday for helping their town. Listening 104. Listen and repeat. Photographer. Microphone. Flash. Lens. Reporter. Interview. Article. News. Listening 105. Listen and repeat. Interest. Interesting. Frighten. Frightening. Relax. Relaxing. Excite. Exciting. Bore. Boring. Amaze. Amazing. Listening 106. Listen and read. What has Chip done? Chip. You were invented to cook and clean. You should be busy. But, Professor, there's nothing left to do. The house was cleaned this morning. The floors were washed. The shopping was done. And the lunch was made. How? Who by? By my new machine. I used your time machine to make it. And it works. I'm an inventor now. Listening 107. Listen and read. What is the text about? Who was the telephone invented by? It was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. When was the first telephone call made? It was made in 1876. What was said? Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. Listening 108. Listen and read. Who deserves a high salary? Bright Star. Posted at 1456 on 12th 
of the fourth. Should anyone earn more than one million pounds a year? I read in the newspaper that a famous footballer was paid the same in one week as a hundred and fifty factory workers. Factory workers work forty hours a week. Footballers just kick a ball around. I think they are paid more than they deserve. Sports fan, posted at seventeen twenty three on twelfth of the fourth. Football stars need a lot of training from a young age. They train five days a week and have strict diets. Also, athletes entertain people, so they are giving something to the public. I think they deserve their money. London girl, posted at eighteen o six on twelfth of the fourth. I don't think that a footballer. Or any other celebrity should be paid so much money. They don't help anyone. Scientists and doctors train for years too. They improve people's lives, but they are not paid as much as pop stars. That's silly. Bookworm, posted at eighteen forty-two, on twelfth of the fourth. I agree with London girl. Surgeons, firefighters. And the police deserve to be paid a lot more. They help people every day, and they work in difficult and dangerous situations. They are heroes, and they should be the real celebrities. Sports fan, posted at nineteen eighteen on twelfth of the fourth. Tickets to football games and concerts are expensive. So are CDs and DVDs. Celebrities were paid a lot less years ago, but these days we pay more for entertainment, so they earn more. It's simple. Bright star, posted at nineteen fifty-six on twelfth of the fourth. Thanks for all your interesting replies. I think the emergency services. Scientists and engineers deserve more money than celebrities, but if people are happy to pay lots of money for entertainment, then the celebrities will be rich. Listening a hundred and nine. Listen, what are they talking about? Hi, Julie. What are you reading? Oh, hello, Carl. I'm just looking at this magazine. It's full of photos of celebrities. These days, everyone can become a celebrity. I think it's too easy. You're right, Julie. There are lots of new pop stars and actors these days. They sing one song or act in one film, and then we never see them work again. But reporters still write about them, so they're still famous. Well, I think it's silly to be famous for singing a song or being on TV. I think that the real celebrities are people who change the world, like inventors and world leaders. I agree, but celebrities are written about because there are so many newspapers and magazines, and reporters have to fill them with something. I suppose it's because the public want to read about famous people. Everyone wants to know about the celebrities and their lives.、Mm. I think it's because everyone wants to be famous these days. That's why there are so many TV programs for the public to go on. Oh, that's sad. People should want to do more important jobs. We need doctors, police officers, firefighters, and scientists. We don't need more celebrities. Listening a hundred and ten. Listen and order the lines. Sing. <laughs> You don't have to sing pop songs to be someone people know. You don't have to play football or be on a TV show. You can be a big star, be a real celebrity. Do something amazing. Be a 
part of history Great scientists improved our lives In many different ways Our world was changed by artists too Through paintings, books and plays You can be a big star Be a real celebrity Do something amazing Be a part of history Their names were not forgotten Although many years have passed Their fame will last forever Because great things always last You can be a big star Be a real celebrity Do something amazing be a part of history Listening 111 Fluency time 4. Listen and read I've bought Megan a shirt for her birthday. Look. It's very nice. What's it made of? It feels like silk. I know, but it's made of cotton. I hope she'll like it. Megan likes writing, so I've bought her a pen. It's made of plastic. Is it? It looks like metal. What's in that box? It smells like chocolate. That's Megan's birthday cake. It's a chocolate cake. It looks delicious. Lucky Megan. Listening 112. Listen and complete the sentences with the words in the box. 1. Let's play a game. Can you guess what I'm thinking of? I'll try. What's it made of? It's made of plastic or metal. What does it look like? It's long and thin. Is it a pen? Yes, it is. Well done. Now it's your turn. Two. OK, I'm thinking of something. What's it made of? It's made of plastic, but it looks like metal. Hmm. Is it square? No, it isn't. It's round and it's flat. Oh, I know. It's a CD. That's right. Your turn, Megan. Three. OK. Guess what I'm thinking of, Saeed. OK. What's it made of? It's made of paper. Paper? Right. What does it look like? It's square and it's flat. Is it a book? No, it isn't. Oh, I've got it. It's a magazine. Yes. It's your turn now. Four. Let me see. Oh, I know. Guess what I'm thinking of. What's it made of? It's made of plastic and rubber and metal. Oh, that's difficult. Uh, what does it look like? It's long and flat and it's got wheels. Wheels? Is it a bike? No. Try again. I know. It's a skateboard. Yes, that's right. Listening 113. Listen and read. How China changed the world. China has a rich and fascinating history. From ancient times, Chinese engineers and inventors have made amazing inventions and discoveries. The ancient Chinese often invented or knew about things long before the rest of the world, but eventually their ideas reached other countries and changed the world. 
Many of the things that we use today originally came from ancient China. These are some of China's most important inventions. Paper. The Chinese invented paper in the second century BC. That's over two thousand years ago. Three hundred years later, in one hundred and five A.D., the Chinese invented a way to manufacture paper, so they could make lots of paper to write on. At this time, people in the rest of the world were writing on clay or animal skins. The Chinese used their paper to make paper money and playing cards. Printing. Hundreds of years before Gutenberg invented his printing press in Europe, the Chinese invented a printing press and printed newspapers and books. The first printed newspapers were sold in Beijing in 700 A.D., and the first printed book with pictures was printed in China in 868 A.D. In 1155 A.D., the first printed map was produced in China. Thanks to these inventions, books changed the world by improving education and making information available to everyone. The compass. When the Chinese invented the compass between the second century B.C. and the first century A.D., they used it to choose the best places to build their homes. The ancient Chinese believed that their homes should face north. So they used the compass to find the correct direction. Later, the compass was used for traveling on land and sea. The compass made some of history's most famous journeys possible. Silk. The ancient Chinese were the first people to make silk. Silk thread is made by silkworms. The Chinese collected the thread. And used it to make a soft, light material. Wealthy people in Europe wanted silk to make their clothes, so a lot of people bought silk from the Chinese. The route from Europe to China was called the Silk Road. For hundreds of years, the Chinese didn't tell anyone how to make silk. It was a wonderful secret. The kite. There are many stories about how the kite was invented. Some people believe that a Chinese farmer tied a string to his hat to stop it from blowing away, and his hat became the first kite. Other stories say that Chinese soldiers used kites to send messages to each other or to warn each other when danger was coming. The first written report of someone using a kite is from about 200 BC, when Chinese army leader Han Xin flew a kite over the wall around a city to measure how far his army needed to dig underground to make a tunnel into the city. One thing is certain: the kite gave inventors the idea for the plane. So it was a very important invention in the world's history. Fireworks. Fireworks may not seem like an invention that changed the world. However, the main ingredient in fireworks is gunpowder, and gunpowder certainly changed the world. The first fireworks were invented by the ancient Chinese. The invention. Might have been an accident, but firework displays soon became very popular. Until the 12th century, the Chinese only used gunpowder for entertainment. But in 1161, they used explosives to make weapons for the first time. Cannons and guns were also invented by the Chinese. At first. Exploding weapons gave the Chinese a great power. They were able to protect themselves from their enemies. But people began to buy gunpowder and guns 
and take them back to Europe. Soon, everyone had these powerful weapons, and the world changed forever. Pasta. When we think of spaghetti, we think of Italy, but in fact, the Chinese invented pasta, and made it into long, thin strips called noodles. The Chinese were eating pasta for four thousand years before European explorers took the idea back to Europe. Ancient Chinese inventions are part of our everyday lives, whether we realize it or not. When you use an umbrella, you are using a Chinese invention. The Chinese made the first umbrellas to protect themselves from the sun and rain. When you use a match to light a fire, you are using another great idea from ancient China. The ancient Chinese invented wheelbarrows, bells, hot air balloons, forks, toothbrushes, football, dominoes, fishing reels, and restaurant menus. Can you imagine a world without any of these things? Listening one hundred and fourteen. Listen and read. Treasure Island. My name is Jim Hawkins. When I was a boy, my father had a small hotel in England near the sea. One day, an old sailor arrived at the hotel. He said his name was Billy Bones. He went to the beach every day, and he looked out at the sea. Billy had a wooden box in his room. Nobody knew what was inside it. After a few months, Billy Bones became very ill. When I visited Billy, he pointed at his wooden box. "There is treasure in that box," he said. "If you help me, I will share the treasure with you." But that night, Billy Bones died. I was very sad. I decided to open the wooden box. Inside, I found some papers wrapped in a cloth. I took the papers to Doctor Livesey's house. Doctor Livesey was having dinner with the squire. They unwrapped the papers and looked at them carefully. Hmm. This is a list of treasure. And a map," said the squire. "The treasure is on an island. We must get a ship and go to find it." So the squire found a ship. He also met a ship's cook called Long John Silver, who only had one leg. Long John Silver told me wonderful stories about the sea and about his adventures. I liked talking to him, but I didn't like his pet parrot. It was always shouting. Soon, we were ready to leave. I said goodbye to my parents, and we sailed away to look for treasure. One day, I was tired and hungry. I wanted to rest for a few minutes, but I soon fell asleep. When I woke up, I heard men talking. They didn't see me. One of the men was Long John Silver. When we find the treasure and get it onto the ship, we'll steal the ship from Jim and his friends," he said. The other men agreed. "We'll leave Jim and his men on the island, and we'll all be rich," they said. Suddenly, there was a shout. We were near Treasure Island. I found Doctor Livesey and the Squire, and I told them about Long John Silver's terrible plan. When we arrived at Treasure Island, we all left the ship and went to explore the island. We found a wooden house and we stayed there for the night. When I woke up the next morning, my friends were gone. I was very scared. But when the other men left the house, Long John Silver told me his new plan.
I'm not going to steal the ship or the treasure, he said. I'm going to help you and your friends. But the other men think I am going to share the treasure with them. <laughs> We mustn't tell them our secret. That afternoon, we went to look for the treasure. But when we found the right place, we saw a large hole in the ground. The treasure was gone. The men were very angry with Long John Silver. You tricked us, they said. But then my friends jumped out from behind the trees. The treasure is safe, said Dr. Livesey. We found it last night. We're taking it back to England and Long John Silver is going to come with us. The rest of you must stay here on Treasure Island. I was glad to sail away from Treasure Island. We stopped in South America and Long John Silver ran away. He took some of the treasure with him and we never saw him again. When we arrived home, we shared the treasure and lived happily. But sometimes, in my dreams, I still hear Long John Silver's parrot shouting. Based on a story by Robert Louis Stevenson. Listening 115. School clubs. Listen and read. What club is each of the children in? Hi, I'm Danny. This is my school drama club. We meet every Thursday after school. We're practising our new play at the moment. I'm trying to remember all my lines. I'm playing the king, so I'm going to wear a crown and a long cloak. I'll look funny in my costume. I love acting in plays. I want to be an actor when I'm older. My name's Lucy and I'm in the school art club. We meet on Tuesday lunch times, and we sometimes meet after school on Fridays too. Today, I'm painting a picture of a garden. I'm using lots of bright colours for the flowers. I like painting pictures. I think it's very relaxing. I like looking at pictures too. Sometimes the art club goes to the art gallery. We see lots of beautiful paintings there. My name's Jack. I'm in the school football team. We get together on Wednesdays and Fridays. Today we're training for a very important match. It's raining a little bit today, so the ground is muddy. I'm wearing my new football shirt, but it's already dirty. We practice in all kinds of weather, because we want to win. I feel happy when I score a goal and win a football match. I'm Emma, and I love music. I go to the school music club every Friday. We all play different instruments. I know how to play the violin and the piano. Today, I'm playing the violin. We're learning a new piece of music for a concert. I love playing music and I like listening to music. I love pop music, but I hate heavy metal. I love classical music too, because you can hear lots of different instruments. Listening 116. The USA. Listen and read. Find the places on the map. Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm very excited because my family is planning a trip to the USA. It's going to be an amazing experience. Over 304 million people live in the USA. It's the third biggest country in the world, so there are lots of places to visit. My mum wants to go to New York which is the biggest city in the USA. It's a really exciting place with lots of theatres, museums and sites. If we went to New York, 
we definitely go up the Empire State Building. It's the tallest building in New York. We'd visit the Statue of Liberty too. The statue was given to the USA by France in 1886. My sister wants to go to San Francisco, which is a very hilly city. It's built on about 50 hills. If we visited San Francisco, we'd ride in the famous cable cars and we'd definitely visit the Golden Gate Bridge. We'd have a meal in Chinatown too. I love Chinese food. My dad wants to visit Washington DC, which is the capital city of the USA. It's a beautiful city with lots of parks, museums and famous monuments. If we went to Washington DC, we'd definitely visit the White House. It's the home of the President of the USA. I want to see some of the famous natural sites in the USA. If we went to Yellowstone National Park, we'd see lots of amazing geysers and hot springs. If we went to Yosemite National Park, we'd explore the beautiful valley and see fantastic waterfalls. But the place I most want to see is the Grand Canyon. It's 1,500 metres deep and 150 kilometres long. Listening 117. School trips. Listen and read. Where did the two boys go? Hello, I'm Toby. Last week, my class went on a school trip to the London Science Museum. There were lots of different exhibits, but my favourite part was a Who Am I gallery. It's all about what makes us the way we are. You can find out all about yourself by looking at different objects and pictures and by doing interesting activities. We learned about the human brain and about DNA. DNA is the code in our bodies that makes us who we are. I used a computer program to see myself as an old man. It was very strange. My friend John used a special microphone to hear himself speak with a girl's voice. That was very funny. The Science Museum is a wonderful place for a school trip. Hi, my name's Mark. Last week, my class went on a school trip to London Zoo. There are over 650 different species of animal at London Zoo, so there was lots to see there. The gorillas in Gorilla Kingdom were amazing. Keshno, a male gorilla, was cleaning himself. Juki, a female gorilla, was very funny. She made herself a hat from an old sack. In the Tiger Territory exhibit, we saw a tiger catch itself some dinner. Tigers like to feed themselves, so the zookeepers put meat on tall poles for the tigers to climb. My favourite part of the day was the penguin show. The penguins played in their huge pool while the zookeeper fed them fish. The penguins really enjoyed themselves, and we enjoyed ourselves too. London Zoo is great!